Welcome to the talk show Promise Bangladesh, sponsored by Crown Cement. And this is Sinha M. Saeed anchoring this very talk show. Viewers, today we have two important guests. One is Mr. Iktedar Ahmed, former judge, Registrar General of Supreme Court of Bangladesh, political economist, constitutional analyst. How are you, Mr. Iktedar? I'm fine. Other being Mr. Abdul Al Mujumdar, former secretary, rector, <coughs> writer, analyst, and an authority on public administration. How are you, Mr. Awal? Fine. What about you? Fine. Thank you. Well, Mr. Iktedar, okay. you are a man of judiciary. And in fact, you experience a lot from your professional life. So many things are going on in Bangladesh, centering even the judiciary. Maladministration, especially the corruption. Maybe some are fake, some are untrue, and maybe few, maybe true. What is the overall focus on the judiciary in Bangladesh? Uh, you know, perhaps, that uh, the extent of uh, development of any country is measured to the uh, judiciary of that country. So, in Bangladesh, uh, judiciary is a constitutional organization. Part 7 of our constitution relates to judiciary. Article 95 of the constitution relates to appointment of the judges of the Supreme Court. The said article says that uh, if a person has 10 years working experience as an advocate in the Supreme Court, he is eligible to be appointed as judge of the Supreme Court. And for being appointed as judge of the Supreme Court from the subordinate judiciary, one needs to have uh, 10 years experience in the subordinate judiciary. These two are the qualification and then he must be a citizen of Bangladesh. And there is another qualification that is that says any other qualification as may be prescribed by law made by the parliament. That qualification though after independence more than 58, 52 years passed, but that qualification has not yet been framed or has not been yet been set out. So, uh, whenever there is any appointment, uh, we find that the appointment is, appointment is made on the basis of the choice of the party in power. It is not uh, on the basis of merit. Judi uh, in the judiciary, lowest post is now, lowest post is assistant judge. And prior to 1st November 2007, lowest post was uh, assistant commissioner. There is no uh, independent post like magistrate with separate entity. Magistrate, magistracy is a power. So, earlier assistant commissioner of the administration cadre uh, would be given the ministerial power. Uh, now, assistant judges of the subordinate judiciary are given the ministerial power. For being appointed either as assistant commissioner or as uh, assistant judge, one needs to have uh, all through second class in his credit. Unless one, one has also second class, he is not eligible to apply for the post of the either assistant judge or assistant commissioner. Then uh, recruitment exam is conducted by the public, public service commission, which is also a constitutional body. And uh, as my experience when I was with the judicial service commission as being registered of the Supreme Court, I found that unless one gets 60 percent marks in the written, he is not called for the by by examination. And by the fifth amendment, uh, an article has been inserted in the constitution, it is article 7a. Said article says that if any person uh, by way of force uh, suspends, abrogates or repeals the constitution, I am drawing attention to the second part, or subverts people's confidence, reliance and trust to the constitution then his, this act will be tantamount to uh, subversive act and it calling for punishment uh, highest, pun, call, prescribed by the uh, law of the land. So, calling for highest punishment prescribed by the law of the land means highest, you know what is the highest punishment. So, if any person does not act in accordance to either law or in accordance to constitution, it is violation of the law or violation of the constitution. And if whenever there is such violation, it attracts newly inserted article 7 uh, A of the constitution. It is another thing. And another is uh, 
uh, the in the 1972 constitution the retiring age of the judges of the supreme court was 62 years by the seventh amendment it was raised to 65 years and by the uh, 14th amendment it was raised to 67 years and 14th amendment was made with certain uh, actually uh, uh, with certain uh, malified intention you know that to make certain person uh, chief of the caretaker government but seventh by seventh amendment the age was raised to 62 to 65 seventh amendment was repealed but the benefit which was given to the judges by the seventh amendment that is still in force and that is intact so actually if you like to uh, obey the constitution if you like to obey the law it should be practiced from the top of the country uh, which is uh, given the mandate to actually uphold the constitution and rights of the people thank thank you very much i will come to you again Mr. Abdul Mazumdar, you have passed long life days in public in administration, I mean the public administration. How do you review life? Actually, the members of the public administration are very close associate to the political masters. They help the political masters to run the country. So, if the quality of the members of the public administration is better, then it help, it can help properly. Then the, uh, the scope for the country to run better is uh, available. But uh, our very uh, inception was not good. You see, after the independence of Pakistan and India, they did not compromise with the quality of the uh, public service. That is, if you look at the IAS exam or CSS exam in Pakistan, they tried their best to uphold the quality as it was before. If uh, That is, if we say about the ICS. Uh, the Harvard University showed in their uh, research among the ICS officers, among the British Indian civil service officers, 50 percent were the best students of the Oxford, 25 percent the best student of the Cambridge and the rest 25 is from various uh, universities other than Cambridge and Oxford. But when Bangladesh uh, was in uh, became, Bangladesh became an independent country, we appointed the members of the civil service without any written exam. And at mm -hmm. first, even not a viva, just making a list and sending them to the training. Then there was huge hue and cry against it. So that was cancelled and one viva was taken by the Public Service Commission. Again, it was protested severely. Then another viva was taken under the chairmanship of Mr. Uh, Rahul Kuddus, the then principal secretary. And you see, I so far I know, uh, Mr. Iktidar, uh, uh, Iktidar is here, he can say, no administrative viva can be taken place mm -hmm. to review the uh, viva taken by the Public Service mm -hmm. Commission. Mm -hmm. Government can disagree, say, okay, you review mm -hmm. it, money I find some fault or I don't agree, but they cannot invite any viva which is over the viva of Public Service Commission. So, there is uh, nothing to be frustrated, I think. There are a lot of good officers, but we have to find out them. We have to appoint them in the responsible positions. And after that, we have to monitor. We have to bring them on accountability. So, by this way, <coughs> we can get rid of the criticism uh, now prevailing. One thing yesterday I saw, I could not think. One gentleman, he is a sealant. He is working in his own Upojala. And someone is telling, they know he is the from neighboring Upojala. But even he cannot get a posting in his own district. Yes. Yes. Mm. It is the law. Mm. It, not in only Bangladesh. Mm. In Pakistan, in India, and mm. in so many other countries. The members of the judicial service, the members of the administrative service, and the members of the police service, they cannot get a posting in district. their own district, but he is working in his own Upujala. And someone is trying to legalize it, saying 
the, he is the, from the neighboring Ufuzela. But neighboring Ufuzela is also illegal. So, so I, I don't know how it can happen. How the gentleman goes there and those who are giving him the posting, what are they doing? I was watching a, TV, watching a program in the Indian television, one BCS officer, WBCS. They tell WBCS, uh, West Bengal uh, Civil Service. So one young lady officer, she was telling, they, I will not get uh, posting in my own district any time. So wherever I am posted, I think it is my home and I work with this, that sincerity. So, but now if it is happened, there is record, there is a PDS. So he has written that he is from that district. Tell how can he be posted? That is, there is no coordination, lack of coordination. There is lack of monitoring, lack of supervision, lack of, uh, lack of accountability. Thank so you very much, we have Mr. To get to the those the, we'll come to you. Thank again. you. Viewers, we're going, going for a short break. And Please stay with us. Thank you. Viewers, we are back to the talk show again, sponsored by Crown Cement. And we are having talks with two very important personalities. One is in the field of judiciary, other in the field of administration. Well, Mr. Iktedar, mm. you know very well recently a former Chief Justice of Supreme Court of Bangladesh has been appointed as DZ, mm. a Judicial Institute. You also know, and we know very well, that another Chief Justice, Mr. Khairul Haq, has been appointed as Chairman of Law Commission at the rank and status of the Chief Justice mm. of Supreme Court of Bangladesh. Mm. How do you compare these two things? You see, uh, actually I have said this uh, while uh, talking to you earlier. Uh, we have a constitution and it is duty of all citizens to obey the constitution or to observe the constitution. Constitution specifically says that a judge of the Supreme Court after his retirement cannot hold any office of profit in the service of the Republic other than judicial and quasi judicial post. Then now you apply your uh, common sense. I was also secretary of the law commission and as secretary of the law commission I had the occasion to visit law commissions of different countries including India, Nepal, uh, Sri Lanka, then United Kingdom and Canada. In all those countries, I found that in the Law Commission, uh, retired professors of the university, they are either chairman or they are either um, members of the Law Commission. In some countries, I found that uh, uh, um, there are uh, re lawyers, experienced lawyers, they are also uh, appointed as uh, in the Law Commission as a member or as chairman. But in most of the cases, I found that university teachers are given preference uh, for being appointed as chairman or member of the law commission. So, although our constitution does not permit that a retired judge of the Supreme Court, it is called, it is Article 9, disabilities of the judges after his retirement. So, if post of the chairman law commission is a judicial or quasi-judicial post, we do not have any objection. Now, we, I leave it to you and I leave it to the audience or I leave it to the people of the country to judge whether post of the chairman law commission is judicial or quasi-judicial post. Similarly, the post of the director general uh, judicial administration training institute, it is an academic institution. Uh, I was also, <laughs> I, I had the occasion to, to also to serve in the judicial administration training institute as founding director. I was the founding director of judicial administration training institute and since its, its inception, retired judges of the Supreme Court are appointed as uh, director general of the Supreme Court. Earlier, no chief justice was appointed as uh, director general of the uh, judicial administration training institute. But uh, judges of the either High Court Division or retired judges of the Appellate Division were appointed. So this time we found that uh, a Chief Justice has been appointed. So if there is contradiction between the uh, constitutional law and general law as constitution as supreme law, that will prevail. Since constitution does not permit that uh, a judge of the Supreme Court after his retirement cannot hold any office of profit in the service of the Republic other than judicial and quasi-judicial post, then it is a just you simply apply your common sense whether the post of the director general uh, judicial administration training institute is a judicial or quasi judicial post it is purely an academic post or administrative post 
So, an administrator, how can we say that an administrator is a judge or administrator is doing job of either judge or he is doing judge of uh, quasi judicial work or the semi judicial work. So, if there is bar in the constitution, I think uh, it is uh, obligatory for all to obey the constitution, those who are in the power, those who are in the policy making process and those uh, who are citizen of the country and those who are beneficiary of the post all of them should obey the constitution, should observe the constitution. If constitution is not obeyed or constitution is not observed, one day we will find that there is complete anarchy in the country. So, if you like to have a uh, prosperous Bangladesh, if you like to have uh, development in all the fields, then you have to obey the constitution, you have to obey the law. Thank you very much. Mr. Abdul Mozumdar, Dr. Sadhu saying, he was cabinet secretary. He was appointed as chairman publishers commission at the rank and status of cabinet secretary. Well done, no debate. As you are the rector of PATC, the highest and apex body of public administration training center Bangladesh. And nowadays, less caliber, man of less caliber, intricacy, and having other qualities which are not matching the very chair are being appointed. As a former rector of the highest body of public administration in Bangladesh, I, what I, is your reactions? I would like to start uh, with a just comment of Confucius, the Chinese writer, philosopher, politician, editor. He told, wherever you go, go with your heart. Wherever you go, go with your heart. That means, where you will go, you will be dedicated there. You will be committed to that place, to that work. And if we look uh, to the army institutions of our country, they appoint the best officers in the training institutes for a particular time. If you look at, look at India, the same case. They send the best one to the civil service academies for a particular period. And after that, the gentleman who worked in the training institute is given a, a just a better posting as compensation or as recognition. But in our country, the authority who appoints, they do not consider the quality. Just they send someone. And who goes there, he is not interested to be there. He takes it as punishment. The, just as an inferior posting. So, in my view, as a former rector, as a former director general of a training institute, I think the rector of the PTC is like a pope of the civil service. Pope, because he will train the future cabinet secretary, future home secretary, even future justices. Because though judiciary is separated from the cadre, but still, the, the members of the judiciary go for foundation training to the BPATC. But we are not looking at the quality. We have no research the what we are getting <coughs> from those trainings. And where is the backwardness, where is the benefit of the training. So, without proper training, we cannot have the better civil service. We cannot have the quality civil service. And that civil service cannot be useful for the country, for the nation, or for the government. So, government should put more importance in the training, especially the members of the training institute should be posted, the brilliant people, the committed people, who can contribute and who can lo who loves the training or teaching. Thank you. Another thing I like to add with him. Yes, yes. The persons uh, who will be uh, asked to deliver lecture in the training institute, they are called the resource person. And in all the training institutes, there is system of evaluating the uh, resource person by the trainees. Uh, by the trainees. Mm -hmm. So, if a resource person fails the evaluation test, then he is not uh, called in the second time. But in our country, I, th I think in most of the training institutes, the, now it is not done. So, if you, uh, training is, it is very important for all these cadres. So, if you uh, call proper resource person, then he will be able to teach in a proper manner and proper thing. 
and if you call a person who is not to that extent knowledgeable, then it will be a, a futile exercise on the part of the actually a, a, all the persons involving in that training. So, I think uh, the authority concerned they should be careful about it and while uh, inviting a person uh, as resource person, he must be a knowledgeable person and he must pass the evaluation test of the trainees. If it is not done, I think a training institute, uh, the aim and object of his will be frustrated and defeated. Oh, good point he raised. The if you were to run a training institute in a better way, then you were to exercise the resource persons who were better, who were the best. And if a brilliant person is posted there, if that gentleman has the knack to provide the best training, then he will find out the best people from various sectors. A businessman can be a guest speaker there. Even a private sector people who is knowledgeable, he can be invited. The retired people, the working people. But if the watcher, if the manager of the house is no, uh, does not have that intention, then he will not find the, find the best one. Now, in regard to inviting the guest speakers, there is nepotism, there is favoritism. Mm. The, we are not putting importance to the best one, mm -hmm. not finding out the best one. Yes, I have friendship with you or somehow I am connected with you, I am inviting with you just to make you happy. So it is also one reason. The, to run the training institution better, you have to make marketing. In the, in, in among the working people, among the retired people, even among the private people, among the university teachers to find out the best one. But uh, now uh, it is in uh, weakness, it is in a faulty way, the, we are not doing that. <coughs> Mr. Another thing, yeah. uh, he has uh, cited the uh, lesson of… Uh, Confucius. Uh, no, no, not. Uh, uh, then uh, cabinet secretary. Uh, Dr. Sadat. Uh, no, not, not Dr. Sadat, Rahul Kuddus. Rahul Kuddus, principal uh, secretary. Uh, he conducted the Bible examination, you said. After, so it is after, the, after, uh, independence. Uh, after independence. After independence? But, but it is the public service commission which is mandated to recruit civil servants and also uh, judges of the subordinate judiciary. Uh, when uh, Isha declared martial law in 1982 and in, in between 1983 and 85, there were uh, huge recruitment uh, both in the judiciary and in the administration, in the lower level, in the, in the post of the ass assistant judge in the judiciary and in the post of the Assistant Assistant commissioner. commissioner. I uh, joined in the judiciary in 1981. Our exam took place in 1981. Uh, that was conducted by the Public Service Commission. And why, when we applied for the post, the advertisement was made for the 60 post. And 127 candidates passed in the written examination of 1200 marks. But uh, when we got the result, we found that Public Service Commission filled up 39 post and kept back in 21 post in spite of the fact that they passed the written examination of uh, 1200 marks. The Public Service Commission, the then Public Service Commission or Chairman of the Public Service Commission or the Board did not consider those persons not suitable for the post of the, as at that time it was called Munsif, uh, although they passed the written examination. Then after uh, one year in 1983, uh, there was a recruitment of 450 uh, Munsifs now which is called assistant judge and they were recruited by the, uh, ministry. the law, ministry. law ministry actually by making amendment in the recruitment law yeah. with the martial law proclamation they are recruited by the law ministry and it was a viva of one to five minutes. So you see in the earlier year you did not recruit persons who many persons who passed, passed the 1200 uh, marks uh, 1200 exam. exam and after one year you are recruiting 450 persons at once uh, with simple viva then if recruitment is made in this way in the judiciary or in the administration then it is very difficult to maintain the quality and earlier when we are in the service we saw that whenever any recruitment uh, from the subordinate judiciary as judge of the supreme court 
a person who is in the gradation in the top, he is recruited. But uh, since uh, coming of this government to the power, we saw that uh, a person who is in, in gradation at least 200, 206, he has been appointed as judge of the Supreme Court by superseding 205 officers. Then if you like to appoint uh, a person who is in gradation 206 and if you like to supersede 205 officers, then you must give reason in the summary that this uh, the person who is in the uh, serial number 206, he is superior to all those who are in gradation above him in respect of honesty, in respect of fairness, in respect of uh, knowledge, in respect of efficiency. If there is no such summary, then the persons who are uh, involved in the entire recruitment process, I think if they are not answerable to anybody uh, in the earthly world, but after their death, they will be answerable to the Almighty Allah for doing this actually a, a type of uh, thank you thank you this 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 type of injustice thank you thank you thank you very much mr githar we are going for a short break viewers we are going for a short break and come to you in very soon we are back to the talk show promise bangladesh sponsored by crown cement and we are having talks with two important guests one is Mr. Iqtad Ahmed, former judge and Registrar General of Supreme Court of Bangladesh. He is also a leading constitutional expert. Other being Mr. Abdul Mazumdar, an authority in public administration in particular. Well, Mr. Iqtad, okay. now the part is budget. Okay. Budget has been passed and there are many chaos, serious chaos and conflict. So many dis dissatisfactions rising very high. And do you think with this bureaucracy, this manpower, the government is in a position to implement the budget properly? Actually, for the last few years, uh, our all the budgets were not pro people. That is, it is not people oriented. In all the budgets, we saw that uh, there was uh, borrowing from the banking sector. And although they gave program and plan for uh, development work, but uh, we found that in most of the development works, uh, 40 to 60 percent fund is utilized and other is misappropriated. So if you like to undertake any development work, you have to be ensured that all money is being spent for the development work. And if money is misappropriated, then the aim and objects of the budget and the actually role of the taxpayer who are actually playing the leading role in generating fund for the budget. If budget does not come in benefit for them, if inflation cannot be checked and you know that uh, anarchy is going in, on in the banking sector and yesterday we saw in paper that uh, interest of four leading groups uh, amounting to 6,500 crore has been waived by the uh, concerned bank. So actually, it is not possible on the part of the authority of the bank to waive the interest. It has been done at the, at the instance or at the instruction or at the direction of the high ups. So if those these things goes on in the economy of the country, the economy, the economy of the country will never prosper and it will never be able to give fruitful result to the people of the country. Judiciary in all the countries has a role to play. Uh, it is called, uh, if judiciary uh, is uh, actually it is called public interest lit litigation. Uh, judiciary can uh, look into any matter which involves the interest of the people or which involves the interest of the public. So it is up to the judiciary or it is up to the uh, who are practicing in the Supreme Court as uh, lawyer or it is up to any individual citizen also. They can bring it to the notice or to the knowledge of the uh, judges of the Superior Court and if they are convinced they can ask for uh, actually explanation from the concerned authority. But uh, in some cases it is done, but in most of the cases it is not done. Court also somewhat Sumoto issue general. role. Yes, the, court has that power also. The, the also. What are the roles lawyers are playing here? Actually lawyers, uh, there are uh, some lawyers uh, who are proactive or pro-people and there, there are some lawyers uh, who 
uh, do not act uh, unless uh, their proper fees are given. So, it varies from person to person. There are uh, benevolent lawyer and there are lawyer who also uh, realized money by entering his hand in the pocket of the client. So, so there are good people and bad people in all the profession. Uh, and uh, if there is uh, number of good people is more, then the profession will flourish, profession will be able to give uh, good service to the people. And if number of bad people is more, then uh, actually that will have a very bad impact uh, over the entire activities of that profession. Thank you very much. Mr. Abdul Awal, 43 percent of the budget goes to administration, management, maintenance. Rest of the budget is for development, development budget. Again, not more than 60 percent of the budget get the lights of the, <coughs> the world. How do you explain this? Okay, thank you. When we go to the market to buy something for my family or for me, I just move half an hour or one hour to save only 10 taka or 20 taka or 100 taka. But in regard to the government money, if the amount is bulk, which is going for misuse, we don't look because we don't have the love for the people, for the profession, for the money. I was deputy secretary in the cabinet division. Dr. Sadat was the cabinet secretary. On 1st July, he told me, the yeah, well, president has signed the budget, but finance ministry will take 15 days or 20 days to print the book. So, you send someone and ask them to bring our allocation from the computers. You see, I learned it and I practiced it, it later when I was joint secretary, additional secretary, secretary or head of the organization. The, if you sit for sending from the finance, then it will take time. Just you have to bring, you have to start your working. You call your departments to submit their first installment and deliver it and monitor it. And when I was the secretary or additional secretary in every ministry, my percentage was 99 or 100. Because I started from 1st July, I learned it from Dr. Sadat, the how did he work. So, if the secretaries, if the senior officials, run after it and they just watch it, the whether it has been utilized or spent in time or not, then 100 percent implementation is not impossible. I could, I could, number one. Number two, if the officers love the, the money of the government as like as well as their own money, then misuse will be lessened. So, you have to appoint the right man, I, I would like to repeat it. You have, to, you, have to, you have to give them the liberty to work as their own and you have to keep them in monitoring and accountability. Then I think corruption will reduce. It is not impossible to just weigh uh, out the whole corruption. There will be, but the size will be down corruption will be combating. So, if we make the people liable to combat corruption, we will get the better benefit from our budget. You are a secretary for more than two ministries, uh -huh. so far I understand. You are the director also. And did you feel any pressure? No. From the minister? No, or no, 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 because they also understand whom to interfere, whom to not. You, you know, the, I recruited many people in BPTC and it was under a political government, but nobody interfered, nobody asked me. But uh, if I uh, do nepotism for myself, if I favor my nephew, my cousin, then they will ask you, the, why not my person, not my man. But if you remain in the perfect track, then the interference will be reduced. 
so i had i was i i worked with the all uh, governments in important positions bnp awami league even ashad but i did not feel so much problem and one thing the if even there is interfere there is problem you are commander i say there is no difference between the army commander and me he is the commander of arms i am the commander of fan when he see is the enemy he fires when file comes to me just i will write properly i will give the decision properly i will not look this side that side so if you work in that way i think political interference is not so big issues thank you very much what about you mr iktidar as a judge actually uh, judges uh, uh, earlier judges never uh, actually uh, received any request from actually uh, from any quarter either from the ministry or from any other department or organization but actually uh, now nowadays we is, we hear that uh, judges uh, of the subordinate judiciary they do receive request from uh, different uh, high ups of the government and if their request is not uh, maintained then they are transferred but while i was in the service i have not experienced any such actually i was not given uh, when i was uh, posted in the full i uh, in the field i was district judge of shunam ganj i was district judge of coxes bazar actually uh, most of the officers they do not want to go to such a remote place when i was district judge of uh, shunam ganj it used to take 14 hours to go to shunam ganj from dhaka by train or by bus and when i was district judge of Uh, coxes bazar is it used to take 14 to 16 hours to go to uh, coxes bazar from dhaka and <laughs> in, by this time you, one can go from dhaka to london also so actually i was uh, district judge of two districts from uh, administrative point of view or from judicial point of view this posting were not at all lucrative so that's why actually and there um, the since those are in a remote area cases um, are not of that much importance to the high ups and that is why i think i have not uh, while i was district judge of the, those two di districts i have not uh, in respect of uh, judicial dispensation i have not re received any request but with regard to appointment uh, while i was session judge of uh, shunam ganj and session judge of coxes bazar i have received request from uh, uh, political high ups but in most of the cases i the requests were not honored or requested at turn down the district judge is a superior position but i was additional district magistrate which is uh, mane below the district judge and uh, as a magistrate uh, there is cash benefit like uh, bailing or those things but i did not feel much trouble or much uh, the i worked independently and i enjoyed my work and uh, the uh, another thing i would like to say hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the mane uh, above everybody among the human beings we believe but even he himself could not do every, everything without any op 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 opposition ha huh? so he has to leave makkah sharif and go to madinah sharif and he had to or fight so as a very simple man how can we think they will do everything smoothly we will not be asked we will not be confronted by anybody as you are officer as you are a commander you are to also i'll come the confrontation it is what kind of enjoyment the yes i could avoid so if everyone i would like to uh, quote the illustrator here he told the administrators who work for popularity they are the worst people now everyone wants popularity though yes he is good he makes us he helps us so the attitude is like that yes you will be a boil with the people you will be a smiling to them when you you talk to them and you will be very sincere to do his fair demand to fulfill his fair demand but if you make a hypocrisy they okay you come you do 
uh, I will see you, but you don't care his work. So, you are to love the work, I would like to say again, and you are to have an ethical standard. I am being paid for that, I must follow it and I must not follow it. If we look in this way, I think political interference is not any big issue. Thank you very much. Mr. Tidhar, last one minute. What is the difference between judicial mind and administrative mind? Actually, uh, for applying judicial mind, uh, one to uh, adhere the provisions of constitution and provisions of law. One, there is very limited scope to apply the discretionary power. And if one, while uh, dispensing justice, applies discretionary power, there is actually uh, scope of miscarriage of justice. So, this is my request to all who are uh, dispensing judicial function, they should adhere both constitution and law. And if they adhere these two books, I think uh, they will never fail in discharging their duty. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Iktidar, and thank you very much, Abdul Mazumdar. Viewers, we are about to end this talk show, and before ending this talk show, I have to summarize what the two speakers expressed and no opined here. Both the speakers are very, very known patriot in Bangladesh, and during their life in respective areas, in professional life, they showed their excellence with head high in pride, not hung down in shame. And still, those who know them very well, they know what they are. And they can speak freely because they have nothing to be blamed with any source of bad shadow or anything. And we are proud of them. And what Mr. Iktidar feels, being a man of judiciary, everything should go in line with law, and constitution. And Mr. Abdul Muzumdar being an administrator basically, he feels from the, for the sake of security, peace and tranquility of the people, some sorts of compromise may be there, but no compromise on the issue of public interest, on the issue of merit, on the issue of justice. And both of them feel that Bangladesh once upon a time was very much blessed with these sorts of qualities. But nowadays, to speak the truth, both of them are very much frustrated to some extent what is happening in the country, in the sector of administration, in the sector of judiciary, lack of, the, lack of excellence and professional integrity pushing us towards a black hole. And how can this be overcome? That is the main question before us. And let us pray to Almighty Allah, as both of them cited Allah and Rasul. And they both believe whatever you do in, on this, in this world, this is not the last one. Wait for the final judgment of the Almighty Allah. You have to face. And if anybody remembers that I have the ultimate judgment before the Almighty Allah, He cannot do any wrong in this world. And that is the main teaching of training, main teaching of justice, main teaching of administration. And thank you very much. We will meet you again in the next talk show. Thank you.